I almost, f I really felt like grief. I felt like I'm grieving and the person is still alive and I'm grieving. I've never felt a feeling like that. So it's a, I think it's, a, it's an okay feeling as a parent to feel that way, like you're letting go of this child because it's somebody that you love. Hey everybody, my name is Angie Morenga. You're watching Just Angie, it's Lifestyle Thursday. And we've just had an amazing series with Dr. Caro on parenting with a heart in mind. So I thought I'd continue on parenting. This is where, honestly, it's just it, people really like these videos because they are talking about people's real life stories. So I thought I'd talk about maybe my parenting experiences and maybe Alth me parenting my daughter Althea. So I actually don't even know where to begin. Um, I think parenting is hard. Parenting is difficult. Um, nobody teaches us how to be parents. So we learn on the job. Uh, which can be quite crazy. But I think one of the things maybe like from parenting out there is I realized I, 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 I disciplined her too much. I, I think I overdid it and it wasn't good, you know. So just for somebody out there, we need to balance how we do the over-discipline. Um, in some ways it has worked because every time she gives a story, I'm like, oh my goodness, you know, she remembers everything. She has an elephant memory and I'm always like, don't remember such things. So she'll say, so she'll say something um, like that day she read a book very quickly and then I was like oh really that's you she said I can do a book in a day and I said how come and she said oh because you never let me watch tv and I was like oh is she oh, is she now there was no tv so I never let her watch tv she was not allowed to watch tv on on weekends she could um she's still arguing about that but I think she still could watch tv on weekends and maybe during the holidays but during the weekday there was no tv and then she was an only child and then it's so strange how parenting we never satisfied with our lot i think it's just humanity because althea wants to have like 15 children because she says she d doesn't like the silence she does she didn't like coming home and she was alone i was at work um especially when she got old enough she'd open the the, the door for herself prepare a snack do her homework and then i'd get home um and even when i was getting married like her dad didn't want to have many children simply because they were also very many children so i'm like oh my goodness you can never I don't know, he wanted to have one child and that's what he wanted to do. I think when I look back on that, I, could, I wish I had had more children. So somebody who's out there who is, has only had one child and maybe they're thinking about it, I don't think it's very healthy unless there's nothing you can do about it. But I think it's important to have another child because even she'll ask me, you know, I don't have siblings, who's going to be my sibling, you know, so she misses her siblings and then I imagine the many fights we've had with my siblings and I'm like, you're not missing anything. But I guess, you know, the grass is always green from the other side. So that's a balance. So I think I, over I overdid it, I overdisciplined her. She does say that the fact that there was no TV, she, was, she developed an ability to read. And that is why I think she has three degrees by the age, she had three degrees by the age of 24. She had an undergrad and two masters, which is good. It's not, I mean, it's uh, something to be celebrated by God's grace. But I think we need to find the balance. And because now with Dr. Carol as well, just don't parent from anger, don't parent from your own fears, because I think I've parented her a lot from uh, my own fears. Um, like, and she will say that. The, the good thing about Arthur, she will tell me. So now she will say, no, I'm not going to do that. That's your fear. She has a very different personality, so it would be interesting also to hear people who are, diff who are parenting children with very different personalities. We're not alike in very many ways. And um, I'm looking forward to my grandchildren to cover that one because I need a child that is exactly like me. Then we can roll and be very happy with each other. Um, yeah, so also just look at different personalities. I think that's important because we are very different. And um, so we do things differently. I like, I like the fact that she addresses uh, me and my fears and has made me, um, has triggered many things in me. Actually, I was, asked, I was telling her the other day she's made me a better leader especially from age maybe 19 to 24. Eh, she's, I've been through hell and high water with that child, but it's good. She, and she would explain and she would say why this is not the way she's gonna do this and why we need to do this this way. So I love the fact that she would sit down and talk with me and we'd agonize um, over things, we'd pray, we'd argue, we'd disagree to agree. Then we sort of found our rhythm, I think that's important to find our rhythm, especially when they're older. And I think I've been on record saying, I wish somebody had prepared me for the fact that the child was going to grow up and, uh, and leave. I don't know why, she hasn't left, I mean, she's, but leaving in so many ways, you know, going to become her own person. And at some point, I don't know whether anybody else has experienced this, so I'll just share it for that, for, for, 
just maybe for somebody to relate, I almost, f I really felt like grief. I felt like I'm grieving and the person is still alive and I'm grieving. I've never felt a feeling like that. So it's a, I think it's, a, it's an okay feeling as a parent to feel that way. Like you're letting go of this child because it's somebody that you love and you've invested a lot of time in. And I think with me and my daughter, it's been me and her for a long time. And so it's time to find me. I remember my late dad used to tell me, get a life. You know, now is when I realized what he was saying. He used to tell me, you need to get a life. You, you need to get a life. I used to wonder, what's dad talking about? But it's the truth because we used to do everything together. And I guess as a parent, he knew one day she's going to want to do things on her own and won't be able to do that thing together. So I couldn't rely on her. So I think it's good to look out for the seasons of life, um, look out for parenting styles, try to balance them out, try to have more than one child. Um, it's important and I guess understand how each child's dynamics um, are different. Um, I remember, I think I've shared before, the first time that she consumed alcohol and came and told me, I was very, I to be very calm and I could feel the Holy Spirit telling me, if you, if you react in a way that's not, um, if you act in a way that's going to scare her, then she'll never tell you anything ever again. And so I had to be calm and sit and chill and actually you see that's now a different season of life because you know i don't there's nothing wrong with her having a drink once in a while if she wants to that's her life it's got nothing to do with me um sometimes she'll tell me oh mom please have a drink but she doesn't understand that i just don't like alcohol i just don't like the way it makes me feel um i overdrank it i drank a lot of it so that was good i think another story is i always used to make sure that she's well taken care of even in my my party hanging days so i'd come home that was important Make sure she's uh, fed, she's, um, she's had her, uh, her bath, and she slept. And then I would now start my nightly duties. Uh, that was important as well. I mean, that's important too, that we're still partying, we're still hanging, we're still having a life, but we're making sure that the child is, um, is okay. Boarding school as well. She went to boarding school when she was in class six at her request. And I remember even my siblings went with me, some of them, because they knew I'm not going to leave the child there. Honestly, my heart was palpitating faster and faster as we got closer to handing her over to school. I remember in the middle of the night, I, I woke up like at 4 a.m. and I'm like, what did I do? Am I okay? I left my child where? And I was going to collect her at 4 in the morning. Um, but she stayed for two, two terms, which was good. She's the one who requested to go to boarding school. And it was good because it helped us. It, it sort of brought her another growth, another, I'm almost saying like a peg in the season, that there was something strong created out of that because um, I was actually able to let go and she was able to let go. So there was some sort of letting go that took place, which was good. Uh, but I would, and that's me, I'd collect her every two weeks. I'd drive there. Um, it was in another county. So I'd drive to the county, bring her back, spend the weekend with her, take her back and drive back. So when I think about that now, those were like uh, four trips in one weekend but I didn't mind and I, I needed her home. And the other funny thing was that when the phone rang every, they were allowed to phone calls, I think every day. And I would be the, everyone knew, it's Mama Althea, she's on the phone, I'm the first one to call, I must meet my child. And then, so that helped. So that kind of boarding helped me, that it could be weekly boarding, but she'd come home after every two weeks and then also that I could call her every day. So that helped me as a person in my boarding process and I'm glad she did that. The other place is when I left her in the UK, um, in the UK, <laughs> in the taxi, we cried so hard, the taxi driver was so, he was so traumatized. He was like, maybe these guys are going to see each other after five years. When he found out she's coming home, like almost after three months, he almost uh, chapped us. He was so upset. And then I remember we cried so much also in the airport till I passed security zones that I was not supposed to. But the tears were excess, the drama was excess, because drama is my middle name. But that was another one. Then I cried all the way back to, to, to London and on my flight um, home to Kenya, I really wept. And I was thinking, this is even worse than, than boarding school. Like, where have I left my child? How do you leave your child in another country? And, uh, but we developed the habit also of talking each day. We talked every day for her six years when she was away. We talked every day and sometimes even twice a day. So those are my Althea parenting stories. Um, share yours, share your experiences, and I'll see you next week when I continue talking about parenting. Maybe my parenting, maybe how I was parented. God bless you. Bye-bye.